All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. And uh, I got something in the mail today from my friends at Banggood. What is it? Oh, who knows? Let's take a look. It's a UR65. This was sent to me by my friends at Banggood for review. Let's take a look at it. Got some uh, nice looking instructions here. That's where those go. We've got the uh, the Chinesium grade battery charger here for 1S LiPos. Does HV and regular. It'll charge at 0.2 amps and 0.6 amps. It does the uh, pH 2.0 and the 1.25. Runs off of XT60. 2 to 25 volts, uh, a USB 5 volt out, and it'll take a barrel connection. Put that aside. Here's the little drone. It's uh, about the same size as a normal tiny whoop. Here's a normal brushed whoop, about the same size. Uh, actually, it's exactly the same size. But there's a big difference. This has brushless motors on it, as opposed to the old uh, the old brush motors here. Comes with a battery. Uh, this kit is the uh, the kit that comes with three batteries. They are uh, 250 milliamp uh, 1S high volt 60C. Uh, comes with three of them. One comes pre-installed in the model. Uh, three bladed props, and these are 0603 17,000 kV motors on a tri blade. Um, build quality looks pretty nice. It uh, looks a lot like that guy. That's the. Uh, oh, what is this stupid thing? Oh, uh, this looks a lot like the Snapper 7, um, except for, you know. Obviously, the Snapper 7's uh, a touch bigger. Uh, the canopy looks like it's identical for the most part, uh, other than the, the color of it. Same layout. Um, same kind of setup here in the back of the frame, or the back of the canopy. Uh, my Snapper had just a screw kind of broken off because nothing really fits in there. Uh, this is set up a little bit different. Let's see if I can zoom in a little. There you go. So as you can see, there's just a kind of a screw that's not quite screwed in. It goes through the frame. Um, I mean, that should be good enough. Yeah, maybe I'll tighten it down. Yeah, I'll tighten it down. That's a little, it's a little weird. So the, uh, the ESC and flight controller are kind of a all-in-one setup here. The props are the uh, in-turning uh, direction, uh, not the out-turning. Pretty nice little setup. It's, it's small, which is nice. Um, I mean, the, the uh, Snapper 7 is pretty nice. I really like flying this inside and outside. It has plenty of power for, you know, a... a Pretty calm day. It'll take a little bit of wind, but yeah, it's pretty nice. This, uh, I got a feeling this is going to be kind of a indoor only thing, which is kind of cool since it's got the plastic hoops. Uh, these these things, they, they do bend. Um, we'll put that aside. So what else do we get in the box? Uh, the typical extra set of props, some rubber bands, screwdriver, a prop removal tool, and it uh, looks like a couple extra screws. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and take a look under the hood, should we? shall we? All right, so that's it. Just one board. Uh, looks like, let's see, the bind button is right, right here. It's pretty easy to get to. The, uh, the VTX and the camera are a all-in-one type solution here. Go ahead and pop this guy back on here. Now 
Now, this is kind of nice, especially in the, the U.S. because it's starting to get a little chilly outside. And um, indoor flying, especially these 65-millimeter uh, tiny whoop style drones becomes... Uh, becomes a pretty uh, common thing. It's it's uh, nice to get some stick time in without freezing your butt off going outside. Um, I don't typically fly a whole lot during the summer months when it's nice out, but you know I do fly. I do hit a par park uh, playground here and there. But in the winter time, these things are great for just just scratching that itch of getting out and doing a little bit of FPV flying. So, all right, this screw here, it does tighten down all the way. They must have just, uh, they must have had something better to do than tighten that all the way down. And as you can see on the bottom here, all the motor connections, they're, um, they're just these quick pin headers. You know, there's no soldering required if you had to replace a motor. Um, USB ports, very easy to get, get to. There's nothing in the way. You don't have to remove the canopy or anything like that. Um, Three screws per motor hold it together. Oh, and they are loose. But hey, what do you expect? I definitely want to go through and tighten everything down real good. And I'm getting about a half a turn to a turn on all of these. I'd say it's about ready to fly. Um, it'd be nice to. Uh... Oh, those are pretty. Pretty flexible frame here. Hopefully, it holds up pretty well in a crash. Um, pretty nice little setup. I I really like the look of this thing. I think this is going to be a absolute ride inside. All right, let's uh, let's get the charger out and put some power to her. This is just a power bank I have laying around that I soldered a XT60 connector to. Uh, let's see which way's up here. There we go. And so what we're going to do is just, we have individual charging channels and they all charge at different rates and, and different voltages. Uh, these are all, like I said, um, HV batteries. So I'm going to flip this little switch up. I don't, I don't actually have any standard voltage 1S batteries. So we're going to flip those all up and then uh, let's see. 250 milliamps, so 1C would be, what, point, point 0.2 amp hour? All right, so we'll just leave these all on. Let's leave these all, all of them set to 200 milliamps. And I'm going to give them a plug them in. Oh, there it is. I... I don't know if other people have this issue, but when it's the same thing with the charger f that came with the, uh, the Snapper 7, is it has this horrible high-pitched squeal to it. I don't, I don't know if anybody else can hear it, but let me hold my microphone up to it and see if you can hear it. I don't know if that came through, but it's, uh, I don't know if that came through, but that's a super high, high-pitched frequency in it. Frankly, it just drives me bonkers listening to it. So uh, we'll come back in a little bit when those are charged up, and we'll give it a rip. Oh, and uh, one other thing I noticed is on the box here, it does mention that uh, the FCC has limited some of the VTX channels, so they've been removed. So uh, I think they've been uh, hey, they've been doing the right thing. This is the right thing for them to do. All right, we'll come back after this guy. It's all charged up. Okay, those batteries are all charged up. I'm gonna go and show you how to set this up without ever touching Betaflight. So first things first, we need to create a new model for our drone here. Uh, I'm using the uh, FreeSky Tyrannus. Uh, the X9D and the X-Lite should be the exact same process. Here we go. So we'll uh, select Create Model. And we'll pick our drone type here, and select enter, and then we'll just page through here, and this uh, this should be your your channel main arrangement it should be throttle, roll, pitch, yaw, 
and we'll long press enter to confirm page and uh, you can name it if you want so uh, go ahead and do that now there we go you are 65 and uh, for me I'm just gonna push up and uh, we're gonna set this up as a d16 model so channel range I'm gonna change this to one through eight because I don't need all 16 channels all I need is my four stick directions and then uh, honestly we only need two switches for myself so we could actually do like one through six but there's no advantage so we'll do one through nine and then we'll uh, we'll come down here to bind and over here on the drone itself the bind button is underneath the canopy right here here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and remove the canopy again, make this a lot easier for everybody to see. And we're removing the canopy. Do, 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 do. Should have done this before. Da, 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 da. And uh, luckily it's pretty, pretty easy to remove it. Um, I would recommend removing it all the way and not just kind of like leaning it sideways on the board because uh, you know, I'd hate for something to get to arc and spark cause problems but uh anyways the button for the bind is right here that's the button i always like to give it a couple pushes to kind of feel it feel it being tactile so this is always a real a real treat to do it's always fun to try to connect these and uh Push that stupid bind button at the same time. And I'm hoping I can do this on camera without the need of an assistant. Not that I have one here. All right. So I can get this kind of. Oh, man. All right. I got that kind of set up. I just have to squeeze it. I'm going to go ahead and push down the button. And by the way, these are non conductive tip tweezers. I really recommend that or something. Something else not conductive. Hold on the button. Give it a squeeze. There we go. And hit bind. Telemetry lost. And with the bind button, and we should be good. So we'll go ahead and disconnect the drone. And we will stop the bind process and reconnect it one more time. Telemetry recovered. There you go. Telemetry is recovered. The lights front and back aren't flashing, they're on solid. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And Put this canopy back on. Oh, I can't wait to fly this thing. Now, I know this will never replace the brush drone. Um, you know, there's all sorts of leagues and clat, and uh, there's all sorts of leagues for flying them, like especially like bars. Close down half the bar. We'll do a tiny whip race. But, you know, if you're flying a brushed whoop versus a brushless, most likely the brushless is. Uh, Kind of stomp all over the brushed whoop. Well, I don't know. That, that may not be true. Um, I would assume the brushed whoop would do way better. But I guess I really don't know. Um, I know I like flying brushless whoops myself. Better than brushed. Alright, there we go. Drone's all bound up. Next thing we have to do is we have to set up two modes. According to the instructions, aux 5 and 6. 5 is... Uh, your arm switch and six is your mode switch. So we'll go hit page and page to inputs. Come down, hit enter. And uh, I'm not going to bother naming these because it really it doesn't make a difference to me. Hit enter on your source and go ahead and flip your arm switch. For me, uh, I use SF. Hit exit. Page, we're going to go to the mixer tab here. Go down to channel five. Press enter and it should be input 5, which was our switch SF. 
All right, and hold the page button. Go back down to inputs. Come down to input six and select your source and go ahead and flip your mode switch. Uh, I'm gonna do SC. Exit out of that and page. Come down to your mixer and for channel six, hit enter and it should automatically populate input five. That's all we need. Now, if we did everything right, I should be able to slide a battery into this little guy, connect the battery. See, so we have telemetry. Flip arm. Nothing's happening. There we go. Uh, they have motor stop enabled, obviously, because uh, all the way at the bottom, motors won't turn. All right. Now the next important. Oh, let's go ahead and disconnect this. The next important thing we have to do is we have to set fail safe. Even on these little guys, you still got to set fail safe. So menu, page, hit up, and for fail safe mode. Just set it as no pulses, and that should be good enough. And uh, we'll give this a test. Plug her in. Recovered. Give it an arm, just bump the throttle just a hair so the props start turning. And, and turn your receiver off. And there you go, it should stop. Now definitely don't do it that way with a full-size quad. Take the props off. These little guys, I'm not too worried about it, but yeah, I guess it could still it could still mess you up pretty good. All right, let's give it a fly. Now I've got a full battery in here, and you can already see that there's some issues with the setup. Um, and they don't have the uh, they don't have the power limits set up right for the battery voltage, so it's telling me to land now, even though I've got a full pack. Uh, it probably thinks it's a 2S, uh, but that's a quick fix in Betaflight. Uh, came defaulted to R8 on the VTX. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and check our mode switch. So, yep, stabilize, acro. All right, and let's give it an arm. It's armed, and it does have motor stop on, so the motors aren't going to turn until I get some throttle. There we go. And she's up. Well, that's pretty good. Now, I always fly acro, but these uh, these brushless, or these uh, smaller drones, I'd like to fly in a stabilized mode. Uh, it's just fun indoors. Outdoors, it's, that's a different story. Let's go ahead and take it for a rip around the house. Uh, camera VTX are pretty darn nice. I uh, really like this. Pretty clear. A little bit of video breakup, but uh, you know, what do you expect? I'm downstairs beneath concrete. Oh, man, this is, this is the thing I really like about these small brush. I keep saying brush. These small little uh, micro size quads. It's just exploring, seeing other places that you normally can't see, like, I don't know, what's it look like above my counters? It's probably gross. Let's see how it does in really low light. So it's, it's dark out and uh, yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, this thing flies really nice. Really nice in the house. There I'm in the mirror. All right, let's come back down the stairs. I had a problem on the Snapper 7 with uh, being in D16 mode with this SPI receiver that it has. It would just it would just lock up, you know, they it fail safe fall out of the sky. But the timer wouldn't run. None of the OSD would change. It was it was weird, uh, and it still does it. I don't know if I gotta do a firmware change to it or what. 
but I don't know. It's just a little issue I found with mine. But it worked great in D8 mode. Wow, this thing flies really well. I haven't changed anything. I haven't even connected it to Betaflight yet. This is this is stock. This is how it comes out of the box. It truly is ready to fly. Uh, yeah, it'd be more ready to fly if it had some things set up a little better, like the OSD was better, uh, like with that that little voltage warning I'm getting. Oop, I'm at three volts. Well, let's take her to the point where she dies, just for just for fun. Let's see what happens. No yaw twitches. Oop, I ran out of power there. Now, if I drop the throttle all the way to zero, it'll just drop out of the sky because of that motor stop. And that's it. Telemetry lost. That's all the power she's got. Telemetry. This thing flew pretty good indoors, but I want to push the envelope and I want to take it outside. And uh, it's not going to fly very well and do the acro things I want with motor stop. And I'm assuming probably air mode isn't on either. So let's get into beta flight and let's fix this bugger up. <clears throat> all right, once inside beta flight here, let's go down to ports. I'm gonna go through all the screens. Uh, that way you guys could see what the baseline settings are for the UR65 in case for some reason you go and you start messing with things and you wanna go back to it, you can reference this video. It is on beta flight 3.3.0 and the target uh, for the older versions of Betaflight is CRBE. Uh, that's not what it's going to be if you flash a more modern one. It's going to be Crazy B F3 uh, FR is what the target's going to be. Okay, so we're here at the ports page. Nothing, uh, nothing crazy here. Uh, we don't have Serial RX because it's a SPI receiver. <clears throat> Config, D-Shot 600, standard quad X, motor direction, uh, 8K2K with the accelerometer on, and they were very specific in the instructions that it has to be 8K2K. Uh, don't know why, but that's what they say it has to be. Arming, 25 degrees, yeah, that's not going to work. I'm going to do 180, that way we can arm it in case we get stuck on the roof. Uh, so here's the receiver, SPIRX. If you're having problems with doing D16 and you want to try D8, like if you're having weird lock up, just change this to FR Sky D and then set up for D8. But uh, the X seems to be working just fine for me. Uh, here, let's see, let's go back up here. Ah, motor stop, I do not want motor stop enabled. And, ah, just as I thought, air mode was not enabled. So definitely gonna want that if we're gonna try doing anything acro, otherwise, well, she's just gonna fall out of the sky. And uh, see, they don't have ESC anti-gravity. Well, they don't have anti-gravity or dynamic filter enabled. So we're just going to leave it like that because uh, it flies pretty good the way it is. There's just a few little things I want to change. I'm going to save that. And uh, these these older F3 or these F3 boards, they do take a little while to uh, connect to beta flight. All right. The other issue I had was with the power it always it was telling me constantly to land now even on a full pack so i'm gonna plug this in this should be fully charged lipo here it's showing me 4.4 and i did bump up the max cell voltage this was at 4.2 you bump it up to 4.6 it'll say it'll think it's a, a single cell lipo which before it was thinking it was a two cell and my voltage was low so we're good there. Go to fail safe, just so you can see what the tab looks like. I'm gonna go through these pretty quick. If you wanna see them, uh, you can always pause it. PID tuning, uh, I believe this is stock Betaflight PIDs. I'm gonna leave the rates the way they are. I, they seem to fly just fine. Um, let's go to the filter settings, and pretty much everything is pretty, pretty Betaflight. Pretty beta flight stock there. Uh, receiver, uh, surprisingly, this does come TAER. Uh, most things I get that are supposed to be FR Sky out of the box, that, 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 that that's always wrong. Uh, RSSI is disabled because it's a SPI. It's built into, it's baked into the board, so we don't have to deal with that stuff. 
Um, I do want to put just a touch of dead band in there because uh, just 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 the way I like it. Modes, as you saw from the previous video, this is how it's set up out of the box. Pretty easy to set up just with uh, with setting up your radio right, which is surprising. So uh, arm and angle come default like this, and nothing else. Uh, adjustments, I don't use adjustments. Servos, obviously we don't use servos. Motors, yep. OSD. Um, I'm going to leave it the way it was. Uh, I It works out just fine for me. There's a lot of things that I probably would take out of here. Um, like, let's see, timer two. I, I don't think I like timer one. Um, crosshairs, artificial horizon. I'll get rid of that. Current meter, we'll leave all that on. Warnings, disarm. Yeah, that all looks good there. We'll save that. Uh, one thing to note, being plugged into just the USB port, it does run the VTX, so it does get a bit a bit on the toasty side. So trying to be quick about this. Sensors, that's I'm just showing these so you can see them. Tethered logging, well, whatever. Black box, it doesn't have it. All right, this thing should be set and ready to rock when we go outside and uh, try some acro stuff with it. All right, let's see how it does. Well, it looks like we're ready to go. Looks like my warnings are gone. Just make sure my DVR is running. <clears throat> I'll leave it in, air, uh, in stabilized mode for now. And then when we get going, go ahead and try some acro stuff. Pretty good so far. This thing flies pretty good. All right, I definitely need to change my low low voltage alarm. This little one cells, I tend to be pretty hard on them. Video reception is pretty good. Radio reception is pretty good. Not bad, not bad. All right, let's go into some acro stuff here. Ooh, yeah, she's got some power. She's got to work counts. Very nice. This is it's not bad at all. It's got a little bit of that, a little bit of that prop wash, but I mean the frame's so damn flexible. I, I would be, I'd be surprised if it didn't. Pulls out of a dive pretty good. I'm pretty impressed. Nice. Very nice. Pretty good. Let's see how it does a flip, like a front flip. Wow. This is not bad. Yeah, I gotta change that low voltage warning. It means nothing to me if it's on all the time. And there's a little bit of a breeze out. Doesn't seem to be enough to affect anything. Let's add a Harley here. Hey, Piggy. And Bubba. Hey, Bubba. 
pet pigs. Friends, not food. Do some roof surfing. Oh, this guy's gonna die soon. All right, very nice. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. And that's a lot of fun. So, back to the bench. What do I think of the little UR65? Well, it's not without its issues. So the frame's a little tweaked, but it doesn't seem to affect the flight. Uh, the screw in the back was loose. Not a big deal. You kind of expect that with these uh, these value quads. Uh, you know, a lot of people have these style batteries floating around. And I was able to use these. I had to kind of weasel this, this connector down through here very carefully. And it will work, but uh, it's, it's a real... It's a real stretch to get that to connect. I mean, in a pinch, it would work. Um, but you see how tight that connector is. It, it, it probably wouldn't last very long doing that. Um, maybe extend these wires out just a hair. I really wish I would have done that out of the factory because then you could use you know, the stick batteries that you know, most of us probably have laying around. The, the little 250 milliamp high volt batteries that they send, uh, they seem to work just fine. The charger works works well it's a little noisy as a some strange um high frequencies coming out of it uh the flight performance man for having a, a super old version of beta flight on it and no dynamic filter blah blah, blah it flies awesome indoors it flies really good outdoors it flies really good it it's super fun um so then the other question is, is do I get a UR65 or like a, or like the, uh, the snapper here? Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it's kind of up to you. I would say if you're going to fly more indoors than outdoors, probably go for the UR65. If you're going to fly more outdoors than indoors, uh, the snapper seven or the six, uh, whatever size you, you kind of want to run with. But I mean, you can't go wrong with either one of them. Uh, the components are all very similar, uh, but I'm thinking indoors, man, that's that's going to be the hot ticket right there. Uh, I really enjoy flying this guy. I, I don't know. I, I can't say enough about it. it, it God, you got to fly it. I don't know how I'm ever going to want to go back to flying a, a brushed Tiny Whoop. I mean, you have more power. About the same flight, uh, flight time, more performance. Uh, these motors, they don't last long, and they, you know, they slowly get, or actually, they quickly get worse and worse as they go on. These things, they're gonna fly. I mean, they're gonna fly for a long time before anything happens. You're probably gonna end up breaking the frame or losing the quad before a motor goes bad, unless the motor is actually like faulty. But whatever. So. I, I highly recommend it. It's a great flying little quad. Uh, I want to thank my friends at Banggood for sending me this for review. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe. Uh, if you don't like it, well, uh, thumbs down. Let me know what I can do to make these better. Anyways, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, well, you know what to do. Uh, and if you, if you do click thumbs down, let me know why. Maybe, uh, maybe it's something simple I could fix, or maybe you just don't like my voice. I don't, I mean, you know, it's always good to know. If you have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comments down below. I, I read every one of them. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the feedback. I love interacting with the community. I, I like helping, helping people out, uh, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the, the awesome little hobby of FPV. I mean, this, is, this stuff is so much fun. If you like the strong please click the, uh, click the link in the description below. It's an affiliate link to Banggood. Check it out. Uh, clicking that link really helps me and the channel out. It helps me bring more content and uh, better reviews for you guys. All right, guys. I'll catch you next time, and we'll see you. Bye. I also wanted to throw out there that, you know, I made up this little, this little kit for my, uh, my micro drones. It fits the... Uh, 
fits the Snapper 7 and you know it would fit a normal a normal brushed 65 millimeter whoop UR65 fits in there just fine. I'll leave links to all this stuff and uh, my my STL for this insert uh, on Thingiverse. Um, makes a nice little nice little travel kit. All your whoops, all in one place. All right. See you next time.